Okay, so a lot of students would get this problem wrong, not so much because they don't know what they're doing, it's because they will skip steps. This is a very common problem, and uh, that's a little bit of a warning for those of you that want to do this problem. Okay, make sure you show all your work, and if you do that, you're going to really increase the odds you're going to uh, get this problem right. So what we have here is what we call a linear equation. We want to solve for the variable m. So if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer, and then we will review exactly uh, how to solve an equation like this and really kind of emphasize the format, the steps you need to take to ensure success. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades, and uh, it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so uh, you know, for those of you that are like, hey, hold on here, I need some more work to uh, work on this problem. Maybe you wanna pause the video for just one quick second work on this, get your solution, but let's go ahead and take a look at the answer right now. Again, we're trying to figure out what m is equal to, and m is equal to negative 12. Okay, so how'd you do? Well, hopefully you got this right. If that's the case, let's give you a nice little happy face and A+, plus, a 100%, and multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are an expert, a certified professional in solving linear equations. They'll be very impressed with that knowledge indeed. Now, for those of you that didn't get this answer, don't despair because it's possible that you may, you know, have issues with your uh, format or your kind of your academic habits, right? Now, I don't want to make this, you know, something that, you know, uh, is like the end of the world, right? It's like, oh, no, I'll, you know, I have a problem writing, you know, my work. But what you have to do here is change your habits. Now, I'll tell you real quickly before um, you know we start looking at the solutions here. Back in the good old days when I was in high school and middle school, etc., I was super sloppy and I didn't really take learning math all that serious. And I did, you know, poorly. Okay, I did poor not so much because I didn't have the mental capacity. It's because I just didn't really focus and I didn't have good habits. Okay, and you have to start there. Okay. If you're having a difficult times in math, the first thing you need to do is increase your focus and you have to improve your habits. Okay. Now, what kind of habits am I talking about? Well, the things that I'm trying to emphasize in this video, being neat, structured, and showing each step uh, when you do a problem. And that, you know, could be tough. The best uh, way to do this is to follow how your teacher is doing problems, okay? So the way your teacher is trying to show you by example, you want to try to emulate them, okay? All right, so with that little pep talk behind us, let's go ahead and get into the uh, solution here. Now, a couple of things. Um, one, we're dealing with what we call a linear equation. So we're solving for one variable, the variable is m. So we have an m here, an m here, an m here. So these are uh, uh, different, what we call variable terms. So in algebra, when you're solving a linear equation, kind of the main strategy is we want to get all of our variable terms or all of our variables to the left-hand side of the equation and all of our numbers, things like negative 10, uh, and you'll see here in a second uh, some other numbers, we want to get those over to the right-hand side. Now you might be saying, what is this little thing right here, this little cone? Well, this little cone is typically the way uh, your work should look. When you're solving equations, especially linear equations, you kind of want to think of the ice cream comb effect. Okay, So in other words, it kind of looks like an ice cream comb, something like this. So in other words, you start with a, you know, a big problem and then you just take one step at a time and it kind of just should whittle its way down to the solution. Okay, So in general, you know, when you have a large problem, you want to take uh, you know, one step and when you take that step, what you want to do is stop and pause and double check and say, okay, did I do the right thing? If you feel good about it, take another step and then kind of stop and pause and ask yourself, did I make a mistake? Uh, you know, you're kind of grading yourself as you go. And if you get into this uh, focus and this kind of habit, 
you will be successful. Matter of fact, you'll get like 200% on your test. And uh, your uh, math teachers will probably say, you know what, you're so good at math, just take the rest of the year off. You're pretty awesome. Okay, so let's go ahead and practice uh, this um, concept. We're going to get all the variables to the left, all the numbers to the right, and we're just going to work things down one step at a time, and we'll whittle things down kind of like an ice cream cone uh, shape. All right, so first things first. Uh, now, when it comes to linear equations, there's you know some additional details, obviously, that we need to discuss. And there's all different types of uh, varieties of linear equations. But here is uh, kind of the first main point. Let me erase this here so we don't get distracted. So uh, when you're dealing with a linear equation, you want to look to see if there's any uh, distributive property situations. In other words, if there's like a number outside of a group or a set of parentheses like this. Because if there is, this is where you want to start. Okay, so you want to kind of scan your equation. Now, not all not all equations will have this situation, right? In other words, if I didn't have this two here, there would be no uh, distributive property scenario. Now, the distributive property uh, formally is this, a times b plus c is equal to a b plus a c, okay? So, you know, even if you didn't, you know, remember the formal, uh, you know, property, the distributive property, you should hopefully uh, know it in terms of what to do. Okay, so here is where we want to start. We see a number outside of a group, a set of parentheses. So we need to use the distributive property to clear this situation. So we're going to take this 2 and multiply by this 3m. So 2 times 3m is 6m. And then we'll take this 2 and multiply it by this 1. This is, again, the distributive property in action. And now we have 2. Okay, so we have... Uh, 2 times 3m, 6m, 2 times 1 is 2. So we just write out the rest of the equation. And at this point, we can now see all the numbers and variable terms that we need to deal with in this equation. Okay, so we have a 6m here. That's a variable term. We have an m or a 1m uh, right there. That's another variable term. We have a 6m over here. Uh, we have a 2. Of course, that's a number. And we have a negative 10 on this side. So again, the objective here is to get all of our variable uh, variable terms to the left-hand side and all of our number uh, numbers to the right-hand side. So that's what we need to work on, and we're going to do this step by step. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next thing we need to do. Okay, so before we start moving variables to the uh, one side of the equation and numbers to the other side, what you want to do after you... Um, uh, you know, cleared up any distributive property situations is to simplify each side of the equation. Okay, the left-hand side and the right-hand side. We want to just get things nice and tidy and organized as possible before we start taking uh, steps where we have to subtract and add numbers from both sides of the equation. So here we have 6m, and then here this is an m. Uh, technically, there's a 1 right here. There's a 1m. So we can combine these like terms. In other words, they both have an m. They're exactly the same here. So if we have 6m here and 1m here, or 1m there, we have 7m in total. Okay, we're combining like terms. Okay, so now at this point, we have 7m plus 2 is equal to 6m minus 10. So now finally, we need to say, okay, we have variable uh, a variable term over on this side. We need to get it over on this side of the equation, on the left-hand side, and we have this number on this side, I want to get it on the right-hand side. So we need to take some steps to uh, make this happen. This is not that difficult. And of course, I'm going to show you that uh, right now. But before I do, I want to uh, kindly ask you to hit that subscribe button. Now, if you're not a subscriber and you're watching this video, I certainly uh, appreciate that. If you are a subscriber, thank you so much. Uh, you know, I put a lot of effort into my YouTube channel just because I love teaching math that much. That much. But if you just hit this little button, it uh, that little tiny act does a tremendous amount for me. And if you do that, please hit that notification button as well. Now, back to the problem. Okay, so now let's go ahead and work on uh, getting the numbers to the right-hand side of the equation. So remember, at this point in the problem, we have number, we have this 2, it's on the left-hand side, we want to get it on the right-hand side, right? Remember, we want to get all the numbers on the right-hand side, and then we want to get all the variable terms 
to the left hand side. Now we could start with the variable terms or the numbers. We're going to have to, you know, move this and this. So it doesn't make a difference if you start with the number or uh, the variable term. Uh, what you want to do is not do two steps at once. Just take one step. So this uh, will focus on taking care of the number, moving that over to the right. After we get that done, we'll take care of this 6m and move it over to the left. All right, so how do we do that? Well, we're going to follow the golden rule of algebra. And that is whatever we do to one side of the equation, as long as we do it to the other side, we are okay. So if I have a positive 2 here, I'm like, I don't want that positive 2 there. I want to get rid of it. Uh, well, I can certainly get rid of a positive 2. All I have to do is subtract a 2 from it, right? So positive 2 minus 2 is 0. So that's how I'm going to get rid of this 2 on this side of the equation. But if I subtract a 2 over here, I have to subtract a 2 here. And notice that I'm writing it in this manner. I'm putting a minus 2 under this positive 2. And I put this negative 2 right underneath this number, negative 10. And I draw a line like so. Now, there are some other formats. But I'm going to tell you right now, after doing this for decades and decades and decades, this is the best format by far. So in other words, you want to make your work look exactly like mine. OK, so now what we're going to do is kind of add down in a column manner. So 7m plus nothing is 7m. Positive 2 minus 2, or 2 minus 2, is 0. OK, we don't need to write that 0. It just kind of disappears. Uh, 6m plus nothing is 6m. And then negative 10 plus a negative 2, or negative 10 minus 2, is negative 12. All right, so what we did there is move that number all the way to the right-hand side. And now we have all of our numbers to the right. We just have this negative 12. So now we need to move this 6m over to the other side of the equation. OK, so we're going to uh, follow the same kind of golden rule of algebra, whatever we do to one side of the equation. As long as we do it to the other side, we're OK. So we want to get rid of the 6m on the right-hand side. So we'll subtract 6m from both sides of the equation. OK, and then we're going to add down in a column manner. So 7m minus 6m is 1m. 6m uh, plus a negative 6m is 0. So that goes away. We don't need to write anything there. And then negative 12 plus 0 is negative 12. OK, so 1m is equal to negative 12 in algebra. We don't typically write a 1. This is what we call the coefficient, like 1m. It's just implied. If you have a variable like m, it's the same thing as 1m. So our solution is m is equal to negative 12. OK, so that's the, kind of the, you know, uh, yeah, the exact steps you want to uh, follow to solve a linear equation. And when you're you know, taking your time, you know, just checking your work one step at a time, you're going to significantly, in significantly increase the odds of you, uh, you know, catching an error and doing this right. But what's the problem? OK, well, I'll tell you what the problem is. A lot of students are just like, you know what? That thing took like five minutes. I don't want to take five minutes to do that. I want to take exactly 23 seconds uh, to do this problem. And so they just go real quick. They're like, da, 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 da. here is my answer. And then they cross their fingers and they hope they get it right. OK, that is not a good strategy. So again, many of you out there are getting problems wrong, not because you don't understand the concepts, is because you're rushing the problem. And I'm just going to tell you right now, uh, if you want to be successful in mathematics, especially algebra and beyond, there's no such thing as rushing. Uh, math is a game of focus. Okay, You have to be disciplined, and you have to have those good habits, neat, organized, and structured. But if you you know just start getting used to doing problems that way, you're going to be uh, you know outstanding. And just a little bit back to my story in the beginning, when I was in high school, I was terrible at math. It wasn't until later I decided to, uh, you know, study and get a degree in mathematics that I had to get super serious about these habits because I would not uh, survive one day like in a calculus class being neat and, unorga and unorganized. Excuse me. OK, so I know I'm kind of like harping on this point over and over again, but it is extremely important that you kind of uh, heed my advice. All right. Now, here is the solution. M is equal to negative 12. But what, let's just say we're like, hmm, did we do this problem right? You know, how could we uh, have some assurance? How can we kind of verify this? Well, do we have to do the problem over again to see if we get the same answer? Well, no. Okay, there's two things. One, if you showed all your steps and you checked your work as you went, 
you should have high confidence in your solution. But what we can do is we could plug this solution, this potential solution, back into the original equation and check or verify the solution. So we got m is equal to negative 12. So let's go back to the original equation and we can replace all these m variables right here with negative 12. And um, when we do that, if the left-hand side, after we do all this math, if we get the same number uh, on the right as we do on the left, then in fact, that's what we call verifying a solution. So we're going to take this extra bonus step right now and do this and see if we got this uh, right. Now, one thing I will say is when you're plugging in a value for a variable, always use parentheses just like this. Okay, so you can see here, I'm gonna plug in negative 12 everywhere where there is an M. We'll replace that and plug in a negative 12. And now let's go ahead and start simplifying this big numeric expression. All right, so we'll start right here inside these parentheses. So three times uh, negative 12 is negative 36 plus one. We'll clean that up in a second, plus negative 12. And then six times negative 12 right here is negative 72. Okay, so we're just kind of taking one or two steps, no more than two steps at once, you know, as we kind of go through here. So negative 36 plus one, that's negative 35. So we have a two times negative 35. We'll get to that in one second, plus negative 12. And over here, we have negative 72 plus a negative 10 or minus 10. That gives us a negative 82. All right, so we're just working this problem down. So now we have two times negative 35. That gives us a negative 70 plus this negative 12. Negative 70 plus negative 12 is negative 82. We already had a negative 82 on the right-hand side. So negative 82 is equal to negative 82. This is a true statement uh, indicating that whatever value um, that we can plug that, that goes into where these variables are that causes a true statement is by definition the solution to the equation. Okay, so you need to know how to verify and check uh, solutions. But uh, listen, this stuff isn't difficult. Now it's a lot of writing, of course, you know, and it uh, the hardest part of a problem like this is not so much, in my opinion, and just working for, you know, working with so many students throughout the decades, it's not that the concepts are hard, it's the habits, right? It's like, ah, I just want to skip steps. I don't want to take the time. So slow down, okay? Write each step, focus, and I'm going to tell you, uh, tell you right now, you're going to just naturally get better at math, okay? Now, if you need additional help in solving linear equations or anything algebra, uh, a couple of suggestions. One, I'll leave links to all my uh, algebra courses and my other math courses, my most popular math courses, in the description of this video. Also, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel on uh, you know linear equations, quadratic equations, algebra, geometry, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.